One crucial skill that a screenwriter must have to be successful is the ability to make things strongly dramatic. Not just give us real life, not just give us reality, because reality is free, something we want to buy a ticket to. So to demonstrate what I mean by that, I'm going to take an amazing sequence from the fabulous movie The Silence of the Lambs and ruin it. It won't do. Now I love ruining movies. Why? Because if I just show you the good version of scenes and movies and I just say, look how good it is. See how it's doing everything right? See how amazing that is? Do that. It's not going to register. But if I show you the difference between what it could have been that would be not so great and how it is that really works and you see the difference, then haha, shazam, it registers. Yes, I'm a student. I'm here to learn from you. Now first, what do I mean by making story beats dramatic? Okay. Every beat you have in your screenplay, especially the really pivotal story beats, you can either do those in like a throwaway, who cares version, or it could be in a more exciting, dramatic version. So think about the movie, The Wedding Planner. When the J-Lo character first meets the Matthew McConaughey character, it's because there is a trash bin flying down the road about to nail her and he pushes her out of the way and that's when they meet. Shazam! It's exciting, it's dramatic. If they would have just been meeting in say like a coffee shop where she's in line and he's in line and they go, oh hi, oh hi, I think you were first, ha ha ha, oh wanna go on a date later, okay sure. Not exciting. So every single story beat that is significant in your script should be presented in a dramatic way. And that doesn't necessarily mean an outrageous way. It doesn't necessarily have to be outrageous, but something that just grabs us. And sometimes small things can grab us. So just grab us. Now, these are things like the first time we meet your lead, there should be some kind of entrance that they have that's significant, not just, mm, there they are. The first time we see the antagonist, the time the love interest and your hero meet, all those significant beats, a more dramatic way to present those. So we're going to look at the sequence in The Silence of the Lambs when we first meet Hannibal Lecter. So this is the bad version where it does not get the drama that it deserves. You spook easily, Starling? Not yet, sir. See, the one we want most refuses to cooperate. I want you to go after him again today in the asylum. And who's the subject? The psychiatrist, Hannibal Lecter. Cannibal, the cannibal. Dr. Chilton at the asylum will go over all the physical procedures used with him. Do not deviate from them for any reason whatsoever. And you're to tell him nothing personal, Starling. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. Good morning. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. May I speak with you? You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? Now that version still works. The movie isn't broken. We got all the information we needed. We know he's a cannibal. We know he is in prison and we know she has to go there to get a psychological profile. So the movie still works. We did not lose any information. What we lost was the drama. So what did they do in the correct version? In the actual movie itself, what we got was, first we got Crawford telling her that he wanted her to go interview Hannibal Lecter, and we got that he's a cannibal, and we also got that you don't want him in your mind, so making us a little scared about what we're gonna see next. We saw the guy at the Institute telling her that Hannibal Lecter is... Oh, he's a monster. Pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset which is more build and more drama for what's coming. Then we got this slow descent, walking down into the bowels of this building. It's like we're going down to hell. And the whole time we're going down, he's talking about how awful he is. And he shows her a picture of what happened to a nurse that got too close. When the nurse leaned over him, he did this to her. So we're getting more and more suspense and build. 
Then she has to slowly go down past all the other cells and he is at the very end. It's drawn out, more build and suspense. So by the time we finally meet him, it is petrifying. It is strongly dramatic. Good morning. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. Can I speak with you? You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? That used a slow build to give us drama, and I'm not saying the only way to create drama is slow build. In like the wedding planner, they had exciting garbage bin going down the road. There's many different ways to create drama, but you need to have things be incredibly dramatic and grab us. That is what really gets us into your story and has us anxiously turning pages to find out what happens next. You want that. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, you might want to check out my playlist, I Ruin Movies, for more, or my website, Screenwriting Classes Online. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Bye.